Dancing with Snakes. For Bill Haast, it isn't a religion, it's an obsession. I just can't give it up yet. It's snake oil he's after. A deadly juice we call venom. He's been doing this serpent two-step for more than 50 years. They call it farming. Venom farming. That's what Host and his wife Nancy do here at the Miami Serpentarium. The Miami Serpentarium, founded in 1948. The once famous landmark is no longer in Miami. They moved it to near Punta Gorda, Florida nine years ago. It must have been one heck of a U-Haul carrying 500 of the world's deadliest snakes. Oh, well, 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 we lost some. He overshot it. That's a Thai cobra shooting enough venom to kill you inside of 30 minutes. Host lets the snake bite willingly. He never milks it, technique of forcing the venom out. But that's very injurious to the snake. You can really only milk a snake one time. It's a little like squeezing an orange. These snakes give their deadly fluid on a regular schedule. There's probably 10 lethal doses here of this Egyptian cobra venom. And then it's feeding time. Each click of this feeding gun that you hear is pumping in a measured amount of a very special high protein diet. But Host isn't doing it for the money. Snakes are in his blood, literally. Let me have a four tenths. Host has been taking injections of poisonous snake venom every week since 1948. I started injecting with cobra venom just to see if I could uh, build up antibodies and uh, resist snake bite. It was just a hunch, and if it hadn't worked... The only way I would have known <clears throat> would have been I would have stopped breathing. <laughs> He started with tiny doses of cobra venom and gradually added other snakes. There's 32 different species in this mixture. That dose would kill anyone else, but he's built up an immunity. He won't quite say the venom holds the key to his youthful good health, but he's 88 years old. He's never been sick, except for snake bites, and can still hop a wall into a pit full of diamondback rattlers. Whoa, you all right? No, I can't prove it, uh, but if I reach 100 and I'm doing what I'm doing now with, with the same, you know, vitality, then I'll say yes. His blood is so potent, he's donated it as anti-venom for snake bites around the world. And I was made a honorary member of Venezuela. The venom he collects is now in high demand in the medical community. But it wasn't always that way. Back in 1946, when he opened the original Serpentarium in Miami, it attracted more tourists than scientists. Because at that time, Venom had very little interest, you know, to any researcher or any scientist. The job has its hazards. He's been bitten more than 160 times on his hands alone. Look at my hands. I'm not bragging about them. Well, maybe just a little. He shows off his gnarled fingers like a badge of honor. I lost a part of a finger. This tendon's gone. This muscle's gone. After a cottonmouth bite a few years ago, the skin on his finger started to disintegrate. He said, why don't you just cut that off? And I said, I can't do that. I can't do that. There was a bone sticking out. Snip, snipped it off. Oh, oh. <laughs> Losing a finger is the easy part. He's been near death over 18 times, stopped breathing, was temporarily paralyzed, and he's the only person in the world known to survive three King Cobra bites. There's been times where we didn't know. We just didn't know. We thought this is it, this is the end. But so far he's made it. That's part of living with Bill Host. 